All right, I'm gonna go over adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions in mixed numbers word problems. I'm gonna go over quite a few of them with you so that you have an understanding of what to do. Um, the first example here, Mandy is trying to fit two boxes into the trunk of her car. One box is one and one eighth feet tall, and the other is one and one eighth feet tall. Stacked on top of each other, what is the combined height of the two boxes? So the first thing you have to ask yourself is what operation are you doing? Because it's all four operations in this. So um, some clue words here, we've got combined and we've got stacked on top of each other. So when you've got a box and then you're adding another box to it um, and we wanna combine the combined height of those two, this tells us that we're gonna add. So we're gonna add these two together. We're gonna add one and one eighth um, plus one and one eighth. Now, because they both have the same denominator, we don't have to get a common denominator here. We can simply add them together. So we can add together one eighth plus one eighth and we get two eighths. And we can add one whole plus one whole and we can get two. And technically the answer is two and two eighths, but you can simplify that two eighths. And we know that two eighths is the same thing as one fourth. So if you put your answer in, as two and two eighths, I think it would work, um, but put it at two and one fourth is the simplified version. But for this purpose, I am gonna put in two and two eighths just to make sure, because it doesn't say you have to simplify your answer. So I'm gonna see if it works. And it does. So if you're not simplifying your answer, it's not gonna be counted as wrong, but I do want you to know that that can be simplified. All right, the next question. A construction company is digging a pit to build the foundation of a house. At the end of the first day, the company had pulled, had hauled away two thirds of a truckload of dirt. On the second day, they hauled away one truckload. How many truckloads did they haul away in all? Again, in all, putting those together, that's telling us we're gonna add. So this time we're gonna add two thirds plus one. And so two thirds plus one is one and two thirds. Hopefully you get some of the easy ones to begin with too, but hopefully I get some harder ones so that I can teach you how to do the harder ones. The next question, a printing press used eight and one half reams of paper to print two books. How many reams of paper did they use for each book? Here's our clue word, each book. So they used eight and a half reams for two books and they wanna know for each book. And so this is a clue that we need to divide here. We need to figure out how eight and one half divided by two. Now, because this is a fraction and we're dividing by a whole number, we can make this whole number two over one. And just a reminder, when you're dividing fractions, a good way to do this is keep, change, flip. Keep the first fraction. Now I can keep the eight and one half, but it's easier to make it a, um, well, actually I would go ahead and make it a mixed, uh, excuse me, an improper fraction. Um, to make that an improper fraction, you want to figure out, um, so you want to do two times eight is 16 plus one is 17. So I have 17 halves. So basically what I have here, just to kind of show you what this means, if I have eight holes, how many halves do I have if I have eight holes? If I have eight holes, I have 16 halves because 16 divided by two is eight. So that's, why, I, that's where I'm, why I'm multiplying two times eight there. And then I have that one half extra. So 16 halves and one half is 17 halves. So that's how eight and a half equals 17 halves. And then I wanna change division to multiplication. Okay, remember I'm doing keep, change, flip. And then I wanna flip the second fraction. Instead of dividing by two, dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. Okay, now I can multiply straight across. I don't have to have a common denominator, even though those denominators are the same. I don't have to have a common denominator. I can simply just multiply straight across. 17 times one is 17, two times two is four. And it says, write your answer as a whole or mixed number. So I do need to write as a fraction or as a whole or mixed number. So I could change this back to a mixed number or I could leave it 17 fourths, but I'm gonna go ahead just for your purposes change it to a mixed number. So how many times does four go into 17? Well, four times four is 16. So there's um, that's how many whole times it goes in there. And so 16 is only one away from 17, so it would be four and one fourth, okay? So I'm gonna put in four and one fourth here. But if I put in 
um, 17 fourths, it should have been correct as well. Next question. Matt filled a bucket with half a gallon of water. Later, he poured a third of a gallon, poured out a third of the gallon. How much water is left? So how much water is left? He started with one half, he poured out one third. How much is left? This clues us in that we're going to subtract. Okay, so I'm gonna do one half minus one third. Now, when I'm doing addition or subtraction, I have to have common denominators. So I've gotta get a common denominator between two and three. And so the common denominator of two and three would be simply two times three, which is six. So they're both gonna be six. And in order, after I get my common denominator, I have to make equivalent fractions. I have to see one half is how many out of six. Well, I know that half of six is three. So one half is equivalent to three six. If you weren't sure about that, you could have said, how many times is two go into six, which is three and one times three is three. Same thing with the one third. I can see how many times three goes into six and it's times two. And so I'm gonna do one times two, which is two. One third and two six are the same. And now I have common denominators and I can simply subtract. Three six minus two six is one sixth. You do not subtract denominators. Um, once you get a common denominator, you get that denominator alone. So we're gonna go ahead and put in one sixth here. All right, let's do the next one. Andy bought four cans of paint and two and two fifths of special paint additive uh, formula to reduce mildew. Before painting his house, he divided the additive equally among four um, paint cans. How much additive did he put in each can? It allows clue words to tell us I'm gonna divide here. So he's going to, um, he divided it, so he had four cans of paint and two and two fifths uh, pints of the special paint, four cans of paint and two and two fifths pints of the special. So he's dividing, basically what he's doing is he's dividing the additive, just the additive into the four. So we're gonna do the two and two fifths additive and we're dividing that by four. Okay, so we're gonna do it the same way as we did the other one. We're gonna make this, we're gonna make the two and two fifths an improper fraction. So two is 10 fifths um, plus the two fifths more. So we have 12 fifths. And remember, you can do that by doing five times two is 10 plus two is 12, 12 fifths. Or you can say two holes is the same thing as 10 fifths. So we're gonna do keep, change, flip. I kept the first fraction. I'm going to change division to multiplication. And then instead of the second fraction being four over one, I'm multiplying by one fourth because dividing by four and multiplying by one fourth are the same thing. So I'm going to multiply straight across. 12 times one is 12. Five times four is 20. My answer is 12 over 20, but I can simplify this because two goes into both 12 and 20. Two goes into 12 six times. 2 goes into 20 10 times, and that tells me I can simplify this even further. 4 also could have gone into both of those, but I'm going to do 2 again. 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 2 goes into 10 5 times. And so my answer here would be 3 fifths. 3 fifths is how much um, additive he put in each of the cans. All right, next one. A farmer planned a half plant plowed a half of an acre in the morning and a fourth of an acre in the afternoon. How many did he plant plow in all? So I'm adding here one half plus one fourth. Okay, I got to get a common denominator. Well, I could do two times four is eight, but an easier common denominator would be four because one half is the same thing as two fourths. And all I have to do is add two fourths and one fourth together. So I don't have to multiply those denominators. Um, I can get the least common denominator. So two fourths plus one fourth is three fourths. And my answer here is three fourths. Next one, at a dealership where she works, Laura fulfilled three fourths of her quarterly sales goal in January and another one eighth in February. What fraction had she reached by the end of February? So there's not really clue words here. But they're saying she did three-fourths and another one-eighth. And we want to know by the end what she has. So that tells us right there that we're adding. So we're going to do three-fourths plus one-eighth. 
And again, we got to get a common denominator. And I could multiply those two numbers together, but I know four goes into eight, and that makes it so much easier than going multiplying four times eight and getting 32. So three fourths is the same thing as six eighths, because I just double the four, double the three. And six eighth plus one eighth is easily seven eighths. So don't make yourself do all that extra work and have to simplify later if you can find the least common denominator and not just a common denominator by doing both, by at multiplying them all. When Greta looked at her cell phone bill for the month, she saw that she had spent one fifth of her minutes talking on her to her mother and a half of her minutes talking to her best friend. What fraction of the minutes did Greta spend talking to either her mom or her best friend. So we want to figure out the total there. So we're going to add those again. So we're going to do one fifth plus one half. Okay. So I can get a common denominator. Two doesn't go into five. So I got to find a com another common denominator. The easiest one here would be 10. Five and two both go into 10. So one fifth is the same thing as two tenths. And one half is the same thing as five tenths. So I'm going to add those together. Two tenths plus five tenths is seven tenths. The dolphins at the Douglas Aquarium fed one, one and one half buckets of fish each day. The sea otters are fed two and five eighths times as much times as much. How many um, buckets are they sea otters fed each day. We're going to do times here. We're going to multiply. So we're going to do one and one half times two and five eighths. Okay. So I'm going to multiply those. Uh, students are coming in. So I got to do this quickly. So one and one half is the same thing as three halves. Let's do two times eight. 16 plus five is 21. 21 eighths. And I'm going to simply multiply straight across. Three times 21 is 63 and 2 times 8 is 16 and because of sake of time i'm just going to put in 60 whoopsie 63 over 16 and hope i'm not wrong and i was right and i don't have time to do the other one but if you need any help don't hesitate to